In this video, I will give you one explanation for why the matrix inverse algorithm works, and in the next video I will give you what I consider to be a better explanation. But you must first understand this explanation. So we're trying to find out the inverse of this matrix, which is a matrix such that when multiplied by this matrix yields the identity. Now if you didn't know the algorithm, how would you go about finding this matrix? Well, maybe you'll try to construct an equation where the unknowns are the entries of this matrix. Let's give them some names and let's look at the problem one column at a time. So suppose that the entries of the first column are A, B, and C. And you will say, well, now I see the problem that I need to solve. Because actually, this column alone will produce the first column of the resulting matrix. In other words, 1, 0, 0. So to find those three special values of A, B, and C, I essentially have to solve this linear system. Where this is the known matrix, then A, B, C is the matrix of the unknowns, and then 1, 0, 0 is the right-hand side. In other words, I would have to solve A, where I'm calling this matrix A, times A, B, C equals 1, 0, 0. And once I solve this system, I will have three numbers that represent the first column of A inverse, right? After all, A, the first column of A inverse has the property that if you multiply it by this matrix, will produce 1, 0, 0. What I did right now was to break up this big product matrix, matrix product, into three small matrix products, one column at a time. And this is one third of it, and it actually represents an equation that we're very good at solving. And that would produce the first column of the inverse. And how would we go about solving this problem? Well, of course, we would start performing Gaussian elimination, bringing the right-hand side along for the ride. And how far will we go with Gaussian elimination? Well, until now, I've advocated only going so far that you can see what the relationships among the columns are. But now I would say, go ahead and go until the very end, until this matrix is in the row reduced echelon form. And of course, the row reduced echelon form for this matrix, A being invertible, is the identity matrix. And when this matrix is the identity matrix, when this matrix is in its row reduced echelon form, which is the identity matrix, then ABC, the solution, will appear on the right hand side. Right? When we solve the system, by the time we bring this matrix into its row reduced echelon form, the solution will magically appear on the right hand side. Not so if the matrix is not invertible. Not so if the row reduced echelon form is more complicated than just the identity matrix. But when it is the identity matrix, then the solution presents itself on the right hand side and that would give us the first column of the matrix, of the inverse. So far so good. How would we obtain the second column of the matrix? Well, we'll do the same thing again. We'll call this A, B, and C, but now we have to get the second column of the identity. So instead of solving this system, we will solve this system. How would we solve this system? By performing Gaussian elimination until this matrix is in its row reduced echelon form. Will the steps be any different from the first problem? Of course not. It's the exact same matrix A. So Gaussian elimination will involve the exact same row operations. It's just that these same row operations will now need to be applied to a new right-hand side, but it will be the same row operations. So I think solving this, solving this problem, the second one, would be a little bit frustrating because it will be doing a lot of the same things twice, a second time. On the left-hand side, yes, the action on the right-hand side would be a little bit different. Same row operations, but different numbers. But on the left-hand side, everything will be repeated. But in any case, we will, this will then produce the second column of the inverse. When? When this matrix is in its row reduced echelon form, in other words, the identity matrix, 
and then the second column will present itself on the right hand side and then you'll do it a third time you will solve this system and this will give you the third column of the inverse and you will be very frustrated because you're doing all of the same row operations a third time all of the same row operations to bring a into row reduced echelon form and you're only doing it for the purposes of seeing what happens to the right hand side so why not do it all at once why not do it all at once recognizing that we're going to do the same row operations over and over again let's just do them all simultaneously let's just take all of the right hand sides and put them together and perform those row reduced echelon form steps steps that lead us towards the row reduced echelon form on all of the right hand sides at the same time let's put them all together let's put the first one here and then the second one you can even do it with a comma like this or you can combine them into a single matrix and then a third one let's do it all at the same time let's perform Gaussian elimination on the matrix on the left until it becomes the identity matrix and perform all of the same steps on all of the right hand sides at the same time and by the time this is the identity matrix this will transform itself into the first column of the inverse this will transform itself into the second column of the inverse and this right hand side will transform itself into the third column of the inverse and we will have all of the three columns of the inverse at the same time and this is exactly what we're doing when we're carrying out our algorithm for matrix inversion because in that algorithm you're invited to write the identity which is nothing but the collection of the desired right hand sides you are invited to put this collection right next to A, perform Gaussian elimination on both simultaneously, which is what you would be doing anyway if you were thinking of the whole thing as solving three linear systems simultaneously. And by the time this is identity, the right side is the inverse. And of course it is, because the right side would be the three transformed right-hand sides here. And as we discussed, those are the columns of the inverse. So there you go. Now it's very clear why that astonishingly simple algorithm yields the inverse of the matrix A.